Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Lord, I come. I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You are the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Praise the Lord. Welcome. This is Dr. Grace, uh, the Bishop of Amazing Grace International Ministries and uh, Baton Glory International Ministries, the mother to the amazing champions and to the church minister's children. I am inviting you today to celebrate with me because we have enjoyed working together on this platform of the CMCs, that, that is the church minister's children. We are celebrating one year since we began. And not only just one year, because I have been working with the church minister's children for many years, and I know the cry that is in their hearts because I have taught them in Sunday school. And that is why I'm inviting all the church minister's children on this platform. When I'm talking about ministers, I'm talking not only the pastors, the other servants of God that serve in the ministry. They are ministers and their children are very important on this platform. So invite them and let them come and share that which God has put into their hearts. And before I invite our speaker today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this platform where we can fellowship with the church ministers, children, and even ministers, and even hear what you have in store for us. We thank you for taking us to another level and even for teaching us your ways. We give you praise and give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we are going to share about the power of prayer. And uh, we are blessed to know that Jesus himself is the one who has given us the greatest example of prayer because he prayed. And so, at this time, I would want us to have a look at, you know what, if you don't have the power of prayer, you cannot ex escape powerlessness in prayer. So, if you need to walk in power, you have to remain in prayer. So, that means you don't only pray, only when you feel like or when you just need to. But you are going to pray continuously so that the Lord is going to fill you with his power. You continue praying in power because you cannot do things. You cannot move anything if you're just going to pray ordinary prayers. We have to pray in power. And that is means that for us to remain in power, we have to be prayerful. We have to engage our lives in prayer. Engage people around us in prayer. If there is something you need to teach others, teach them how to pray. If there is something you need to tell others, tell them about prayer and let them also pray. Don't just talk about it, pray. So at this time, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verses 10 to 13. And I'm reading from the King, New King James Version. The Bible says, Be kindly, that is friendly, caring, and generous affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, that is in esteem and respect, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, that is thoroughness, excellent, fervent, enthusiastic, keen, powerful, deep. That is what we're talking about, being diligent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient, in tribulation, continuing steadfastly, that is persistently, consistently, unwaveringly, constantly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. If you are going to walk in power, prayer that are powerful, you have to do some of these things. You have to be kind to one another, 
you have to be caring. You have to be generous to one another. Don't look at what you don't have. Look at what others don't have and become a blessing to them. Be, have that brotherly love, making sure that others don't suffer when you know you can take care of a need. And then you have also to be fervent in whatever you do. You have to be fervent in the spirit. So because you need the spirit of God so that you can move on. And then for you, you have to learn how to distribute that which God has given you. What God has given you is not for keeps. It is for giving. It is for distribute. Learn to distribute and become a distributor of God's wealth. And God is going to bless you. You know, when you learn and desire to become a distributor by starting with what you have, the little you have, start distributing. Don't hold. If you have two coats, give one. If you have two pairs of shoes, give one. If you have two Bibles, give one. You don't have to hold. And yet, that Bible that you're keeping there in your shelf is not going to help you when it is in the shelf. But it can be of a blessing when it is given to somebody else. Give somebody that one phone. You have so many of them. You don't even know the one to use. Make sure you distribute that what God has given you. And also the spiritual things that God has given you. The word of God that God has given you. Distribute it. Distribute your prayer. Pray for others. Let others be prayed for. There are people who cannot pray. But you, you are the one to pray for them. If you have friends, pray for them. If you have enemies, pray for them. Whoever you know, pray for them. And I am here to let you know, we prayed at Amazing Grace Children's Home together with the Amazing Champions. And now we have seen the answer to prayer. And their school also has been a school of prayer. And they have seen the results. They've done very well. When other schools have done poorly, they have excelled. And our one of our champions is actually leading in their school with over 400 marks out of 500. We are blessed because we are the best thing I could teach them or what I could give to them. I told them, you know what? I might not, I will not have enough to give you, but I can give you something where nobody can, else can give you. And, or, and that one, nobody can take it away from you. And I taught them how to pray. Since they, when they come into my, under our care, the thing that we teach them most is prayer. And when they learn how to pray, they learn how to distribute that which God has given to them. They learn how to give. Every time we have to make sure they collect all the clothes they have and they start distributing. Each one of them, every month we make sure that they have something they can give to others because there are others who are in a, in a worse state and even in a, in a situation where people look at them, they are wealthy because there are others who are really needy. And we thank God. And that is why we are asking you, please, Invite your friends, log in into our website, www.agracem.org. And also, please log in into our Facebook account and invite others and even into our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and even share. And uh, become a partner with this ministry now that they have performed very well. We need sponsors. You can choose to, 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 to sponsor one right now so that you don't have to wait until the companies have taken them. You as an individual, you can take one and educate them all the way in high school. From, from, uh, from we call them Form 1 up to Form 4 or even up to the university. That is how we have been working. There are partners who have taken those kids all the way from, uh, from uh, eighth, uh, ninth grade all the way to the university. And they are celebrating to see what God is doing. And I'm telling you, we have A students. And uh, it is not because they were really clever. Or they were really they, they were really good. It is because they learned how to pray. We have seen answers to prayer. Then you know what? Jesus in Mark chapter 11 verses 15 to 24. We have seen Jesus arriving in Jerusalem in the temple. And he drives people away who are buying and selling animals. And you know what? They were actually being allowed by the people who are, who are supposed to be ministers. Ministers are allowing people to do that. And Jesus, when he saw that, he chased them away and he stopped that business in the church. And you know why, where they were doing that business? They were doing it in the, uh, at the court where the Gentiles, the only court for the Gentiles. Instead of teaching the Gentiles the ways of our God, they were actually selling, buying and selling there at the court. Instead of people being in the business 
of praying and calling unto our Father to bring souls into the kingdom of God. They are busy selling, selling their ministry, selling things that, that, that are not even worth selling. They are not selling Christ. We need to lift up Christ because they are saved. When you lift him up, he is going to bring men unto himself. So let's lift up Jesus and let's pursue. Let's pray because then you, as we are praying, we are lifting up the King of Kings and he's going to do the business of bringing others into the kingdom. And so Jesus, as he was chasing these people out of the temple, he told them, the scripture declares, my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. May we have the stealing that has been taking place. Can it stop? Let the house of the Lord be a house of prayer. Let people get back to church and pray. If they need to go and pray, because you know what? Even if the churches have been stopped, you, you have not been stopped to go there and pray. Seek, be, go there into your, their building alone. Pray, pray in your closet. Hide into a place where you are praying. You don't have to show others you are praying. Pray and the Lord is going to come down and do great things in your life. And God is going to do great things as you continue to pass. Glory to Jesus. You know what? Je Jesus, as he, when he kicked them out of the temple, you know what? He, 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 this one is actually letting us know. Um, letting us know that, you know what? Um, it, it is actually the fulfillment of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 verses 1. What Jesus did, it is saying in verse 1, the Bible says, Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. You know what? The Lord whom you seek. Those ones who are seeking the Lord. Because you know the Lord needs a preparation for him to come. He needs people that are prepared. Prepare and you will see. And the best way you can prepare, it is through prayer. Pray and the Lord will come. Seek him in prayer and he will come. And you know what? When he comes, he says, he is going to send the messenger. And the messenger that he's sending is not an ordinary messenger. He's the messenger of the covenant in whom the Lord delights and even us who delight in him. Behold his coming. He is coming now very soon to come and take the church home of people who have who have cleansed themselves. And the best way you can cleanse yourself is through prayer. And as you are praying and seeking the Lord all the time in prayer, you know what? You are going to be powerful. You are going to have things in your heart. You know, becoming powerful is not speaking loudly. Becoming powerful is you pray and uh, prayers are answered because you are praying according to the will of God. And then, you know what? Many of us, why are two things happening? Because you know what? After, after Jesus cleansed the temple, you know, they went out. And as they went out, we are told, actually, when the priest saw what he did, and even the teachers of the religious law, when they heard that Jesus w w was able to drive away people from the temple, do you know they were planning to kill him? Yes, it doesn't matter who is planning to get rid of you because of doing the right thing. But I am here to declare into your life, you are going to walk in power. And with the power that God is going to give you, you are going to dismantle every plan of the enemy. Because nothing is going to happen to you without the will of God. Only that which God has allowed is going to take play, place in your life. And you know what we are told as they were going. Do you know there, there, there was a fig tree that was dead. It didn't have any fruit. Let's not be found without a fruit. If we become prayerless, we are going to be half, we will not have any fruit. Because prayer is a seed. And it also becomes the water. It also becomes a fertilizer. It becomes everything to us. Prayer will nurture. Because it is through prayer that you'll be able to get the right word to read that will nurture your soul and even nurture others. So that is why we need to be prayerful so that we can be powerful and be found with the fruit at the right time. Be in the right place at the right time. So, because you know what? God is not going to bless you if you're not in the right place. You have to be in the right place at the right time. Bearing fruit at the right time because you cannot bear fruit if you're in the wrong place. Be in the right place and you bear fruit. Then you know what Jesus told them? He cast that tree. Let's not be in a position of being cast. 
because you are not bearing any fruit. We are not telling others about him. We are not lifting up his name. Let us not be cursed. Let us not be like the fig tree. Because you know what? The following day when they came, they found that it had dried up because he cast it and then it withered. And because, I mean, he didn't have any fruit. So Jesus just cast it. And when it was cast, it withered. The following day, it was completely dead. And the disciples were amazed. And they wanted to know. Look, Rabbi, that's what they say. The fig tree you cast has withered and died. And this is what Jesus told them in verse 22. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must re re really believe it. It will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. It will be yours. Believe it. Every mountain that is on your way is going to move. Every kingdom that is trying to exalt itself, it is going to move and allow the kingdom of God, the, net, the sea of people that is trying to hinder the move of God, it has to be moved. And it has also to be allowed to uh, be able to, 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 uh, to accommodate the people that God wants to be accommodated so that he can do and perform miracles one after the other. May the Lord bless you as you pursue him in having prayer. May the Lord continue to use you powerfully as you continue to seek his face so that the messenger that will be sent will not find a dry, dry tree, but he will come and find a tree that bears fruit, a tree that you enjoy to continue, to allow to continue bearing fruit. Be fruitful as you continue to seek the face of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us a word for the season. I pray that each and every person that has listened to me and will be sharing this message, Father, you make them prayerful so that King of Glory will be able to do things that will glorify your name and they will do things in your will. They will be in the right place at the right time because they have prayer, that prayer that will lead them into the right place. We thank you and we give you praise and give you glory. And I also, I'm also praying for all our partners and thankful that you've given us success. Our champions have succeeded, oh God, and you're going to give them the school of their dream. And we thank you for what you have done in our lives. You have given us joy and testimony one after the other to celebrate the greatness of our God. Thank you for answering our prayer, our Father. We give you praise and exalt you and magnify you. For it is in Jesus' name we have prayed and we have believed. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you continue to honor him and serve him. I want to thank God for all our partners. And at this moment, I want to invite the servant of God that is going to share with us the word of God. Welcome, Prophet Steve and your dear wife, Pastor Grace. Or more the CX. God bless you. Hello and praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Prophet Steve and I'm joined by my dear wife, Pastor Grace. She's right here with me. It's a blessing to be here once again uh, on this platform CMC Amen Live, courtesy of Bishop Dr. Grace. We appreciate for allowing us to be here, woman of God. Thank you so much for allowing us to share uh, on prayer. We believe it will go a long way to bless everybody and uh, the Lord will bless us greatly. So mm -hmm. um, we are talking on power the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not something new to believers because prayer, we all understand, is the medium of communication between God and man. Mm -hmm. uh, we also understand very well that prayer is a, is, a, is, is, is a tool that man uses to provoke God to move on earth. Uh, it's a form of a petition, a request. Yeah. Heaven is limited to act on upon earth until there's a man mm -hmm. to pray. Prayer is a form of intimacy between man and God. Mm -hmm. When we get into a place of prayer, we get intimate with God. We, we begin to commune with God. We begin to communicate with God one on one. And I will say that only us human beings can pray because we are unique in this aspect. Angels worship. But we never hear angels are praying. And prayer elevates us far much beyond 
uh, the animal level. For instance, mm -hmm. God has created us as the only beings that can pray. Yeah. Angels can only worship God. But human beings, we can pray yes. and worship. We can do both. So it's, it's a very powerful tool. And when we understand how to pray, because prayer is not just a... Or a it's not some words put together. Uh, put together, yeah. You, you must know how to pray. Mm -hmm. And that's why the disciples came to Jesus one day. They asked him, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Yeah. You know, we've been with you for quite some time. But now teach us how to pray. And you see, you must be taught how to pray. You must know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just putting words together like my wife is saying, and then ex maybe saying that's a prayer. No. And that's why the Bible says our prayers are not answered because we pray amiss. Yeah. Some of us do not know how to pray. Mm -hmm. So when they ask just teach us how to pray, he didn't tell them what to pray. He taught them how to pray. There's a procedure of how to pray. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a hierarchy in prayer. You can't just begin praying without acknowledging who you're praying to. The Bible says we pray to the Father. Our Father who art in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, it teaches us much about that. So but in, in do Isaiah 29 verse 14. It says, uh, Behold, I will again do a marvelous work among these people, a marvelous work in a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. Amen. Amen. So this is also reinforced in Jeremiah chapter, 20, uh, chapter 9 verse 23, 24. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts boasts about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord. We can all move on that plateau, whether we are people of great intelligence or the simple, the simplest of mortals. Amen. So, this is basically reinforcing the fact that you can never talk about God without understanding him through prayer mm -hmm. because it is through prayer that god reveals himself to us mm -hmm. so we're gonna be jumping into maybe the types of prayers because if you're gonna understand the power of prayer you must understand the type of prayer that you're going to make mm -hmm. the first type of prayer is the prayer of supplication this is basically a prayer of request and the the prayer of supplication interestingly can be done by everybody regardless of their faith I mean, if you're making a request before God, yeah. anybody can ask God for anything. Even atheists who don't believe God exists, mm -hmm. they always look up to a supreme being. They are saying, Father, help me today. Even a thief, by the way, when they go to steal, they always say, protect Father, help me, protect me, me mm -hmm. so that they don't arrest me. You know, everybody can make a prayer of supplication. But you see, the prayer of supplication, I will say it is the elementary level of prayer for a serious believer because if you if you are stuck at the prayer of supplication you can never understand the deep mysteries of the kingdom that can be revealed in depth in prayer mm -hmm. you know how you maneuver through the prayer of supplication will, will determine if you are a believer or an unbeliever the bible also says in the book of daniel chapter 10 verse number 12 the very first day that daniel prayed god heard him and god responded so whatever you pray god will always respond to his word Keep meditating upon the word of God so that it may not depart from you. Amen? Anytime you pray the word, you may face resistance in the realms of the spirit. But the reality is, most of the prayers you make as a, as a prayer of supplication, God always answers them. The second thing you're going to touch on is a... Petition is a request to a higher being. It's like when you want something so much and you go to God petitioning for that. Most of us at some point we petition God by offering something in return. Like uh, Hannah went to God before God and she was petitioning God to bless her with the fruit of the womb because she had lived for so long with her co-wife Benina and she didn't have the baby and when she went before God she made a petition it's like uh, going to someone you want something from that person and you go to them with the faith and uh, a surety that you will get that thing from that person because it's only that person that can help you with so Hannah went to God with that petition that Lord if you kindly bless me with a son this is what i will do and uh, petition you have to know personally i believe when you're petitioning you have to know the word very well because you will use the word of god 
to make that petition before God. A prayer that it's not is not based on the word of God is not complete. No. So when you're petitioning, you have to know what to say and what to use. If you need a sign, then go to God with the petition, with the understanding that God is the giver and God said he will bless us with the fruits of the womb. So prayer without the word cannot be answered. Yeah, And actually, it's, it's like saying uh, God does not answer every prayer, by the way. If God was to answer every prayer, then there will be no, maybe, for example, there will be no poor people in the world. Yeah. But God answers his word. Yeah. So you must pray the word mm -hmm. for you to receive answers. He's, he's obligated to his word. Mm -hmm. So if you pray anything that is not his word, it's like symbols before him. It, 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 it doesn't hold. He's not, he's not... He's placed his word above everything else. Yeah. So when you pray the word, then answer is guaranteed. Yeah. So when we are going to God in prayer, make sure you're praying the word, not just in words mm -hmm. yeah the third one because of time is the prayer of intercession to intercede means to pray for somebody else mm -hmm. the book of ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 the bible says god is looking for a man who can stand in the gap and petition and pray mm -hmm. and intercede for the nation uh when you are an intercessor this is where the intercessors come in intercession you are making a request on behalf of somebody else God looks for someone who can stand in the gap on behalf of us so that his wrath may not befall us. Mm -hmm. See, it does, God does not work with multitudes. That's one thing I, I've, I've come to learn about God. Yeah. God works with individuals. True. That's why deliverance is a person at a time. When he comes down in Egypt to deliver the families, he tells Moses, go and put the blood on the doorposts. When the angel of death is passing, a door by door, mm -hmm. he will not enter in. So deliverance is always about individuals. Yeah. The touch of God is about individuals. You can stand in the gap on behalf of your nation, on behalf of your family, on behalf of your friends, and intercede and, and, intercede and ask for mercy on their behalf. And this is what happens, especially when we receive prophetic words. We, we rally a team of intercessors mm -hmm. to pray over the prophetic word being released. If it's a, Because I, I, as a prophet, I believe... A prophetic word is not complete without um, a tag of hope yeah. and direction. Yeah. And many times when God gives a prophetic word, he expects us to align to that word by acting to it. Give people hope. God is saying, if people don't do this, I will do this. So now it has to bring people to a place of intercession mm -hmm. so that that thing probably might not happen. And we've seen God has averted so many things when he has released prophetic words either through us or even through other servants of God. So intercession basically is, is it has the power to preserve. Uh, and that's why intercessors are not just noisemakers. You know, people think the one who, sh who prays the loudest in church is the, in the, the, longest. In the longest. And uh, in many languages is the most powerful oh, prayer Christ. and cries most. No, it, it's about precision. It's about accuracy. Oh. And every intercessor, every intercessory prayer has the tag of preservation. Yeah. So uh, an intercessor like Esther, like Mordecai, they, they, when they pray, God preserves mm -hmm. the generation. That can be found in Exodus chapter 32, verse 7 to 14. So uh, also for you to be an intercessor, you must be of strong heart uh, uh, and of strong will. You must be of strong heart and of, and of strong will because many times you'll be wailing on behalf of other people. Yeah. So let's look at the perils of prayerlessness. Number one, prayerlessness is a sin. That is in First Samuel mm -hmm. chapter twelve, verse twenty-three. Prayerlessness is a, is the fastest and surest way to become a sin. Yeah. If you don't have a prayer life, you don't have a discipline of prayer. It's very easy to fall into sin. Yeah. The disciples care. Well, one of the things just taught them in praise: lead us not into temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from the evil one. So, so when we don't pray, when we don't pray, we often find ourselves entering into sin. Mm -hmm. Number three, prayerlessness is an outright direct rebellion against God. If you don't pray, it's like a rebellion against God. It is a command. 
men ought always to pray and not to faint it is a command mm-hmm. so when you don't pray you are entering into a sin of rebellion against god and remember one of the unforgivable sins is the sin against the holy ghost when you rebel against the holy spirit that's a very grave sin that you don't want to enter in so as a believer you must always have a constant prayer life it's the fastest way to cooperate with the devil If the devil wants to destroy you, the first thing he will do is to distract you from praying because not prayer is the only way you can communicate with God, you know. So if 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 he wants to to lure you towards him, the Bible says he's roaring around like a lion. He's not the lion because of the lion of Judah. Mm-hmm. He is not the lion. He's trying to pretend to be the lion. So if he wants to destroy you, to still kill and destroy you, he will first destroy your prayer life. Mm-hmm. So if you if you realize that your prayer life is down, then just know the devil is knocking on your door so hard. It's telling God to stop what he has started. Yeah, when we when we fail to pray, we are telling God to stop what he started. You see God like we we say in the prayer of petition is when we ask God to do something and he does it. God does not stop at that point. Mm-hmm. But when we stop praying, whatever is is God through prayer sustained. must be sustained through prayer. Mm-hmm. So the moment you stop praying after you receive the miracle, you are simply telling God take stop it take it back, you know? And this happens by the way is not something theoretical is practical. We've seen people come to church sometimes when they are jobless, they cry on the altar, pastor pray for me, prophet prophesy for me, and all these things, you know. And people will be so stubborn with their problems up until they get the solutions. Then when they get the solutions they walk out. Yeah. And some of them even abuse the pastors and the altars where they have served in and being a CMC I've, I've seen that a lot uh when my father used to pray for people they go out there get it big they come back and abuse him and all that kind of stuff you know and and uh, and one of the things i have learned over time and seen also when i also got into ministry is that it's short lived because what you get on the altar must be sustained on the altar yeah. you know when you when hana got that child on the altar yeah. she said this child will always serve god on the altar yeah. and, and 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 she did that and you see we we have to be sensitive about when we ask god for prayer mm. because we are not just we are not just playing piki piki ponki you know it's a serious affair you are engaging heaven on earth's affairs yeah. and when heaven responds you must sustain that mm-hmm. so don't don't stop what god has started because of your prayerlessness yeah it's continuing in the flesh what began in the spirit when you're praying the bible says we pray in the spirit mm-hmm. you know prayer is not complete until you enter the spiritual realms mm-hmm. and that's where the the mysteries of the kingdom are downloaded to us so if you receive something in the spirit and then you stop to pray you're simply engaging that which you receive in the spirit and finishing it in the flesh uh apostle paul one day writes to the corinthians the corinthians church and tell them who bewitched you 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 begin in the spirit galatians. galatians yeah but you end in the flesh you don't want to end up things in the flesh that you began in the spirit mm-hmm. so it is important to continue what you receive in the spirit by engaging in prayer yeah it's asking god to do his work yeah ezekiel 22:30 to 31 on earth matthew 18:18 18, 18, and uh, 17:21 you cannot manifest without prayer as a matter of fact babe jesus spent more time in prayer and less time in manifestation. Mm-hmm. But the danger with our time today is that many people want to manifest without a prayer life. You, you we, we want to show how accurate we are online, but our prayer life is not accurate. Most I think most people today think that the people who are supposed to be praying more are the pastors and the bishops and the reverends yeah. and uh, the ushers, the worship team, the Sunday school teacher, they feel that their prayer life should be just God bless me today and that's it. Mm. But every believer... Yeah, so the last point is uh, if you pray in sin, it's as good as prayerlessness. That is in Psalms chapter... 66 verse 18 If you're praying in sin it's as good as being prayerless so we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here once again bishop we love you uh i pray that these few nuggets will help us to be prayerful and above all things to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else will be added to us prayer is a very powerful tool use it wisely and make sure you use it every day Personally I can testify that everything in my life everything that has worked in my life every step that I have gone through in my life it was through prayer and it was because of a prayer I made that's why I am where I am today 
There are doors that have opened in my life because of made a prayer. There are things that have gotten in my life because of a prayer. And even my marriage, I can say it's a prayer. It's a manifestation of a prayer I made. And I remember I made a prayer with the specifications of what I wanted in my marriage. And true to that word, true to God, because the Bible says he follows his word to complete it. He followed his word because I made a prayer through the word of God. And here I am today, I can testify that my marriage is what it is because I made a prayer. Yeah. And so we need to understand the power of a prayer. It doesn't matter how long the prayer is. As long as you pray right, it will come to pass. Yeah. So as CMCs, it's our prayer and our challenge today that we be prayerful. If we have stagnate, it's stagnated somewhere in our prayer life, may God reawaken us. May God give us the zeal again to, to, to keep pushing because prayer works. I don't know if I can say magic. But prayer moves stuff. You can move things with prayer without even taking any step other than just prayer. So maybe be prayerful and just seek God in the deep. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Prophet Steve and uh, your wife, uh, Pastor Grace. It's a blessing always to have you. You give me joy. Every time I think about you, I am telling you I celebrate because you have taken this ministry to another level. May the Lord use you, continue to use you powerfully and expand your ministry and thank you for every time you've shared the word of God powerfully on every platform that God gives you. Thank you even for being a blessing to the CMCs. May the Lord bless you, CMC Prophet Steve. We thank God for you. For now, May the Lord bless all of you as you continue to share and as you continue to help us to partner with us. Log into our website at www.agracem.org. Share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bishop Dr. Grace Kariuki. And I thank God for my husband, Dad Richard, who has always stood with me. Dr. Richard, you're a blessing to me. God bless you. For now, may the Lord bless you as you help us even to partner with us and even to sponsor one of the champions as they enter into high school. God bless you for now. Shalom, shalom. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be blessed. Shalom. <laughs>